Israel under Obama. principles that I laid out yesterday. Rising tensions between Israel and the United States over Iran. With me now are Karim Let's consider what Obama has done in his administration. First of all, the treatment of Netanyahu as a foe instead of an ally at a time when Israel needed clear support, especially the threat in the face of a threat of Iran, was absolutely an act that should be absolutely condemned by everyone. Obama should never have conducted himself in such a fashion with an ally. Secondly, Obama has actually forced the freezing of settlements in Israel, something no other president has ever done, and he has done it in, up, in a high-handed way that is without precedent. Furthermore, he has declared without any question that the Israeli settlements are illegal and he does not recognize him as legitimate. In addition to this, when it, the time comes to defend Israel from Iran and the nuclear, America continues to engage in negotiations that are leading nowhere and, and, and allowing the Iranian government to continue doing its work instead of giving un unequivocal and clear support for the state of Israel. Where has been the outrage of an American president, supposedly a friend of Israel, when somebody has stood several times on the podium of the United Nations in American soil and has declared the decision to wipe out, wipe off the map, Israel? Where has been the statement of President Obama clearly rejecting such a statement? and supporting Israel in whatever way it has to do. Every statement about Israel has been equivocal, ambiguous, and ultimately when it comes to the final decision, probably not so friendly, including the leaks as to Israel refueling stations in um, former Soviet republics and other aspects. What I think this means to Washington is that they know that there are there's a significant amount of people who are not going to tolerate what the administration proposed. I mean, it's quite obvious when uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke in, in uh, the Senate and the Congress, Senate and the House, the joint uh, session, and he got 29 standing ovations. Okay, Dr. Frager and I put the poster in with all our with all, whatever we wanted to say about not dividing Jerusalem, not giving up any land and say, standing up to the mullahs to free Jonathan Pollard, to free Gilad Shalit. We put in the Washington Times on that Friday that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu came to speak with President Obama. So we know it strengthened Prime Minister Netanyahu. Two years ago, when they first met, we did the same thing. And Senator Schumer, Charles Schumer, who was supposed to be in the program, his office called two days later and said, please take us, our name off the uh, program because we know he's being pressured by the White House. So we know there's an effect that this has. I want to take this opportunity and to send a very clear message to the President of the United States. With all due respect, he's not my President, but when I'm hearing his voice telling us to go back to the 67 lines, I'm telling it very clear, it will not happen. We will never go back to the 67 lines. And when I'm hearing President Obama speaking about finding agreement or a solution to Jerusalem, we do not need any agreement, we don't need any solution. Jerusalem will stay united forever, the capital of the Jewish people. And we should stand very proud on this weekend when we celebrate the 34th anniversary of the unification of Jerusalem and to tell President Obama, take your hands off Jerusalem, take your hands off the old city, take your hands off Temple Mount and the Western Wall. I am very optimistic, even though we hear so much and we hear about the UN declaration in September, I can assure you that we will prevail and despite all the pressure coming from the UN, from the US, from the EU, 
the commitment of the Jewish people to the land of Israel, that's what will keep us alive. And I can assure you that I will continue with my colleagues in the Knesset to make sure that we will continue to build the communities in Judea and Samaria. We do not agree about any solution. What has happened to, to the uh, dialogue in this country since Obama and, and his um, minions have, have taken power? Well, across the board, things, I mean, not even looking on the international level. First of all, we have no respect in the international community now because, especially in the Arab world, all they represent is strength. I mean, all, all they, no they respect. All, all they see is, yeah, if you have strength and you show that you mean business, this is the only thing they understand. Does Obama telegraph strength of America? Obama does not channel that America is strong and means business. When you see the President of the United States bowing to the King of Saudi Arabia, this sends a message that we are groveling. Um, we need to go back to the way things were. I mean, look, George Bush did not, he ended up, he was what, in office 10 months when 9-11 happened. And I'm really glad that he was in office, no matter what happened. I'm glad he was in office and not a Democrat. I can only imagine that we let's sit back and let's use restraint. We don't have, this is not a time for restraint. They really only understand military strength. And I think what we're finding is liberals in this country, you know, when they talk about Obama and they're very pro-Obama, we need to vote for him again. And there's no talk about the failure. All of the policies that have failed, we have gas prices. Gas is almost $5 a gallon here. My God, it's never been like this. I'm from New Jersey. And gas is up close to $4 a gallon. And that's where they refine it. And this was a state that's supposedly one of the lowest in the country. And we can go on a trip for a couple of days and come back and gas has climbed 50 cents a gallon.